Hi Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Ascendant, or Venus. This is Dane, and I am going to be doing your March 2021 money and career reading for you. Now I ask if this reading resonates with you, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, and also to subscribe to my channel. And if you would like to be notified whenever I upload new videos, and I upload all the time, just hit the bell notification button. And if you're interested in any of the cards that I'm using, they will all be listed and linked in the description box below. Now before I begin this reading and clear the energy space, once again a reminder not to be scammed by anyone in the comment box pretending to be me offering you a reading. This person is a scammer, they are not me, do not be scammed. Alright, with that said, let us clear the energy space, raising our own energy vibration and releasing any negativity. So take a nice deep breath in, exhaling whenever it feels comfortable for you. Releasing all negativity from the body like storm clouds. Letting yourself become, become calm, centered, and at peace as we enter into this safe and loving space. All right. Let us let the bowl sing as we see what the tarot has to say. Aquarius, March 2021, Money and Career, Aquarius, March 2021, Money and Career, Aquarius, March 2021, Money and Career, Aquarius, Angels and Spirit Guides, show me clearly, guide this reading and show me clearly, Angels and Spirit Guides, okay, Angels and Spirit Guides, show me clearly, Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides. Angels and spirit guides. I love how your cards are just falling out. It's like, I need to be heard. I'm right here. You know, that's how we're moving forward. Angels and spirit guides. Show me clearly. Fantastic. That's going to be the type of time it is, this this time period with money and career. It's like, okay, let's let's go. Let's get this done. Let's look at it this way. Things are going to be coming out to you. It's like they're popping out to you, kind of like a 3D picture. Or you know one of those pictures that where you, like, you had to cross your eyes and then you could see the hidden image behind it? That's what it's like. You know, that's what it's like. It's going to be like you've been working so hard and then all of a sudden your eyes just go the exact right way and you see the image. Okay. Aquarius. March 2021, Money and Career, Aquarius. March 2021, Money and Career, Aquarius. March 2021, Money and Career, Aquarius. Angels and Spirit Guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading. Ooh, these two? Yeah, these two. Fantastic. So we're starting off here with visualization. This is the third eye chakra. And then we have nurturing, which is the earth star chakra. So let's see how this correlates to what the tarot is saying. We have the two of wands and the three of cups. We have the queen of pentacles. We love seeing pentacles and, and wands in, in money and career readings. Because of course the wands are career, the pentacles are money. And the queen of pentacles, earth sign energy, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn, is really holding on and embracing that prosperity, that abundance. If you're born on the cusp with Capricorn, your Capricorn side is going to be coming out quite intensely. And you can find that to war just a bit with your Aquarius side. So just be mindful of that. Then we have the Eight of Cups, the Nine of Wands, 
and the artist. This deck has two extra cards in it, the artist and the well. We're very much here embracing creativity, creativity despite of what people are saying. We have the Ace of Pentacles, which is a gift that you are absolutely taking, and the Two of Pentacles, finding balance, understanding, you, you know, kind of things coming together. So let's start off with looking at visualization. Visualization and the Third Eye Chakra. We kind of laugh at visualization now, you know, it's kind of like, I've read the spirit, the spirit, I read the secret, I watched the, the secret, you know, what does spirit have to tell me about visualization that I don't already know and kind of distrust? Well, what spirit is saying here? is that visualization isn't simply to get what, you, what we want. You know, a lot of times we're visualizing our success and divinity has its swoop in if we're open to it in a way that we, we hadn't seen. We hadn't thought, oh, I'm going to do exactly X, Y, Z. And then we wind up doing exactly X, Y, Z, exactly the way we had thought, exactly the way that we had planned. Divinity, when we give our lives over to divinity and say, take me on this journey, help me to understand, you know, lead me because me leading myself doesn't always work out the best way. And so here, when we visualize, it's not because we're going to get exactly what we want the way we want it. It's that we're opening up the door. We're opening up the mindset. We're, we're saying, I get to be successful. And we're seeing ourselves as in that moment, as we envision success. We visualize success and it opens up the door. It changes our patterns within our mind. It says, I can do this. Now, the cool thing with visualization, and also the scary thing with visualization, is that our minds do not know the difference between make-believe and reality. And that can be very intense and very overwhelming. Because we are visualizing, we are seeing ourselves opening up doors. We're seeing ourselves say, yes, I can. Now, this is for the positive, but this is also for the negative. If we visualize disaster and things falling apart and, oh my gosh, you know, which is something I used to do all the time. We think, oh, I'm preparing myself. If, if something bad happens, I'll be able to take it. It's like, no, we're setting the pathways for something bad to happen. And then to say, I kind of knew it was going to, right? Here, visualize what we desire. Visualize the way forward and embrace it openly, honestly, and powerfully. It brings us to nurturing nurturing our souls, nurturing our bodies, nurturing ourselves with the Earth Star Chakra, connecting with our roots, connecting with what is so absolutely and intrinsically important to us, what builds us into greater people, but also what has formed us when we were small. It's connecting with nature, with Earth, and with the Earth in a way that has us fierce, but also has us kind, has us nourishing. And so here, with the with the nurturing, it's opening up new doors. And we're seeing that with the two of wands. We're seeing that with the, I can see more than what I had originally seen. I can move forward in a way that I didn't think was possible. I can break down barriers. I can open up doors. I get to be more than I expected. And that's, that's really cool. So when we have the two of wands coming forward in the Rider Waite Smith deck, the person who holds it isn't just looking out and saying, huh, I can do this. They're holding the world in their hands and they're looking into it and saying, huh, there's a place for me here. There's a power here. There's an understanding here. There's a truth here. I didn't realize that before. And this is us looking at our passions, our careers, what we desire. And a lot of the times, this is why divinity is so adamant here with saying, open up your minds open up your desires to what I have planned for you because the way the world is going to move forward is going to be far beyond, or the way your world is going to move forward is going to be far beyond what you had originally imagined, what you had originally thought. And so here it starts to open up that door. It's kind of like spirit is just showing me, like I, I always had a dream, right? And doing the tarot was not part of that dream. It wasn't part of how I saw my future. And yet, it is everything I love most within the world. You know, there was a time there I thought I would be a professor. I thought I would move forward in a completely different direction. Completely different direction. And yet, being here was not what I expected, but is profound and brilliant joy. And so, when we're looking at this, when we're looking at the way the world opens, when we're looking at what it is that we desire and what it is that we want and what it is that we need, we start to see things differently. And what comes up while we're seeing things differently 
are the people that should have celebrated us, are the people that should have been there for us, should have been there with us, but just weren't, just couldn't be. And so with the three of pentacles, with the three of cups, okay, and there is a sense of it also being related to the way prosperity shines down. So that's the correlation to the three of pentacles. We're looking at things and saying, oh, these are the people that again, should have celebrated us, should have been there by our sides and couldn't be. The three of, Pent the three of cups is this sense of hurt and pain and disappointment around our prosperity. And it's greatly affecting, and that's why Spirit keeps on having me say pentacles, our prosperity. The way that we embrace we wealth, the way that we move forward in wealth, it's like, but I was shut down before. But I was told that I could never succeed. But, you know, people doubted me. People got me so angry at myself. People made me think I couldn't do it. Yes, we get failed. And a lot of times in life, we get failed time and time again. But it's for us to learn different lessons, for us to see more powerful and more impactful truths. And the Three of Cups also has us understand that in the end, the main person we need to trust and the main person we need to believe in is ourself. And with that knowledge and with that truth comes tremendous power. And it brings us to the Queen of Pentacles. It brings us to the person who nourishes, embraces, and embodies success who says, this is me, this is what I want, this is what I need, this is how I'm moving forward, and this is where I'm headed. The three, the three of cups, when we have the doubt and the fear, leads us to saying, well, what is it that I truly want to be successful, bountiful, and prosperous within my life? And how can I rely on me? Because people let us down. And this isn't to say, you know, don't trust anybody ever again, but this is to say, be very mindful. Be very mindful of the person you put your faith you you put your faith in. Be very mindful of your own abilities. But it's also being very mindful of where we're negligent within ourselves, where we we aren't the strongest. And it's okay to say this is my strength and this is my weakness. That's maturity. Here we're starting to see the interconnectedness of things. We're starting to see the the empowering and the ideas and the the coming together and the the greater understanding of it. And it leads us to the Eight of Cups. It leads us to a walking away from what we once thought we would love. It leads us to a powerful and profound ending. And as we walk away, as we say, you know what, no, I don't get to. I don't get to be held back by dreams that just aren't right, you know, by an idea and just so fixated on that idea that I can only be this one way, that I miss a golden opportunity. So here what we're being told is to broaden the horizon and stop coming back to the Three of Cups. For me, always, the Three of Cups is betrayal. And it's hurtful, heartfelt, overly like, oh my gosh, betrayal. And it's finding our prosperity. And it's saying, I'm done. I'm done with a dream that didn't work out. I'm done with a hope that it will never be. Sometimes we do have to give up on people. We do have to give up on jobs. We do have to give up on things. Spirit is showing me this job that I once had. And I kept on thinking, it'll get better. It'll get better. It can't stay this bad forever, right? And I stayed there way longer than I should have. Just thinking that things would turn around. And it was divinity that, that pushed me out and said, you cannot be here anymore. Are we missing those signs? Are we holding on to something that is long past its expiration date? And is it just one way of looking at a dream? One way of looking at what we desire? And not seeing the multitude, the multitude of different roads that are awaiting us. It brings us to the Nine of Wands. The Nine of Wands, and the Wands, of course, represent work, right? The Nine of Wands is everybody telling us exactly the way that we should be doing things, exactly the road to success. And if you're not doing it just as this, you will not be successful. You will not be powerful. You will not be what it is that you want to be. First of all, everybody's not made to be a CEO and that's okay. Everybody's not made to, to run their own business or to you know be, be the head honcho all the time. 
we get to be happy with where we feel comfortable. And there's a sense here of listening to what the world says that we should be. Listening to the way people say we should move forward and saying, but this is me. I stand firm. I stand powerfully within my truth. And I move forward towards my goals. And it leads us to this sense of empowerment and realizing that we're a heck of a lot stronger and fiercer than we had ever thought we were. And as we come to that realization, we start to become the artists of our destiny. We start to become the creators of what we want from life, of what we're desiring, of what we're envisioning. I always, I always admire artists so tremendously, especially people who can paint and draw and all that stuff, because it's, it's just such an innate part of them, and it's so exquisite. And that's what we are embracing here, an innate part of us that is exquisite and that has been shoved down because it's not what the rest of the world said it should be. Do you see the world as 99% blissful people walking around so tremendously happy that they can, they can barely contain it? No. Well, that's at least not how I see the world. There's anger and there's bitterness and there's resentment and there's you're not going to get the better of me mentality. I see that for 99% of the world. There's a small, small, small 1% that has found truth, has found peace. And that's what we're looking for here. If you've stumbled across this channel, you're not like everybody else. If you're part of this family, you are astoundingly different. And that's okay. It can make us feel like we're wrong, like we're not seeing things the right way, like we're dreamers and to get the he our heads out of the clouds. No. We're artists that are creating a future that is exquisite, that is, that is powerful, that has tremendous meaning to it. It brings us to the Ace of Pentacles. It brings us to God's source spirit, however you see the divine, the universe, handing us a gift of prosperity, of bounty, of abundance, and we are taking that gift. These are also seeds to be planted within us, dreams to be, to be obtained and held onto. Desires to be understood. And as we have these gifts come forward, we see the Two of Pentacles. The Two of Pentacles is telling us we're balancing too much and we're not doing a very good job of it, which is harsh, but, you know, truthful. Our emotions run high and we're not balancing ourselves while we are trying to juggle everything. And isn't that the truth? Like you're, you're running around and it, some days it feels like like a chicken without its head, right? You're just running and going and, and trying and barely getting time for the self, for the soul, for even just basic needs to be met. This is saying to slow down, to look at what's important, to see what we desire, and to open up our eyes to a profound and powerful truth. And as we do so, we start to balance ourselves. We start to call ourselves forward. We start to say what's important what needs to be done and what can I let slide, <laughs> you know? What needs my immediate attention and how can I also pay attention to myself? It's not being selfish, it's not being egotistical. It's saying, if I want to do the job well, I first and foremost have to balance me or else it's going to be half-assed jobs just all the way around, which nobody wants. And so here, it's stepping into and sitting in our bodies and ourselves to be able to balance and move forward in prosperity. Because divinity has the repeat of the number two here. And the repeat of the number two is to say that you are collaborating with divinity. Divinity is right on your shoulder during this time saying, listen, listen to how I am guiding you. Listen to how I'm showing you things to move forward. Dreams are coming your way. You know, daydreams, visions are coming forward. And it's like, oh, wow, that, that was a nice thought. And then we just kind of poo-poo it. No, look at what's wrong. You know, what doesn't feel right, what needs to change. And we can feel it within ourselves. And then look at the seeds that are coming and the harmony that needs to be felt on the inside to bring forward the prosperity that crowns you as a queen, that crowns you as someone who is more behind the scenes, I see queens as more directors behind the scenes than actors upon the stage, those are kings, that 
a person that is more behind the scene, more introspective, more looking at what they desire, and then saying, that's it. That's the truth forward. That's where I'm working at. That's what I'm working at. And it's slowly and steadily building something that becomes solidly and firmly planted within your truth. And it brings you wealth or what you value as much as money to start building and accumulating the wealth that is, that is desired within life, the prosperity to move us forward. The subconscious chakra message is inspiration. And this is the sacral chakra. This is where a lot of negative energy from this life and from past lives are held. So this is the place where the I can'ts really, really abide. And the thing with the sacral chakra is that it holds our creative energy. It holds our creative force. So when we have past life grievances and when we have this life grievances and when we have I can'ts prevailing within ourselves, it's very hard for that creative energy to shoot forward and to say, I'm here. I'm here and it's my dawn and it's my day. Listen. So meditating on balance, being present within the self is going to be so important. And looking at the I can'ts and the I'm afraid and saying, why? There's a new dawn here. There's a new way forward. Start to embrace the inspiration. It does not matter your age. It does not matter how many times you failed before. Start to embrace the inspiration and you will be shocked at what follows. But also start to embrace the collaboration between you and spirit. The way that divinity is opening up the doors. The way that you're looking at things differently than before. And it leads us to the subconscious tarot message, which is the world. Being able to come forward in the world and say, this is me. I see this as like a tree swaying in the wind, you know, just a sense of this is me. This is what I desire. This is my truth. I get to step in the world and say, I've arrived. There's more to me than what I realized, than what I gave myself credit for. And when we claim that truth, we claim our power and we move forward towards success, but also away from fear, away from the, the, the doubt and the apprehension and the, oh my gosh, I just can't, into the, oh, hells yes, I can. And I absolutely will. All right, Aquarius. I hope this reading has resonated with you. I wish you nothing but light, love, peace, and happiness. May harmony always be with you. I am sending loving, healing energy to each and every one of you. I love you all and stay safe. Let's end this reading with a meditation, a clearing away of negative energy, a raising of our positive energy as we release what is holding us back and as we embrace the new seeds, the new prosperity, the new bounty that is guiding us forward. So take a nice deep breath in, exhaling whenever it feels comfortable for you. May you move forward in peace and in harmony, Aquarius.